Hi, kids, and welcome to screencast number two of our investigation into DNA technology, where I discuss a little bit about recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA is actually an artificial DNA sequence resulting from insertion of DNA or a gene from one species of an organism into a different organism. We discussed that a little bit in the first video, but here we're going to talk about how that's done. The purpose of all of this is to get an organism to express a foreign gene, that is a gene that we want expressed from one organism into another. GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, are the result of recombinant DNA technology. Remember the example of the glow-in-the-dark pigs. They had a foreign gene from a jellyfish that produced a phosphorescent or glow-in-the-dark protein that once inserted into the genome of the pigs, the pigs would then express that gene and glow in the dark. But that was just an experiment to see if animals could actually become genetically modified organisms as well. As you know, recombinant DNA technology is a little bit more advanced in plants than it is in animals. But the first genetically modified organisms were bacteria. Bacteria have a particular type of DNA inside of them called a plasmid. And there are little rings of DNA that copy themselves inside of bacteria and are actually used by bacteria to transfer genetic information from one individual bacterium to another. Here's a complete list of genetically modified organisms approved for sale in the United States. So undoubtedly, you've used genetically modified organisms in your diet. Canola, corn, cotton, flax, papaya, potatoes, red-hearted chicory, also known as radicchio, soybeans, yellow crookneck squash, sometimes known as summer squash, the sugar beet, and tomatoes. Let's discuss a little bit about how DNA is recombined in different organisms, transferred from one to, to the next. First of all, an enzyme called a restriction enzyme, first discovered in bacteria as a defense against viruses. The way it works, seen here in this image here, here's a bacteriophage a type of virus that only attacks bacterium. Down here is the bacteria. The big blue loop is the bacteria's own chromosome. When a macrophage virus attacks a bacterium, it injects its DNA, it, it injects the viral DNA inside the bacterium. Some bacterium have evolved a defense mechanism to destroy that invading DNA. That defense mechanism is the restriction enzyme, illustrated here in the green. What the restriction enzyme does is it can cut the DNA at specific sequences along that strand. The bacteria's own DNA is protected by chemicals that the bacteria places on the DNA surface. So in fact, the viral DNA does not end up infecting the bacterium. Scientists soon discovered a number of different types of restriction enzymes. And in class, we have some activities that will discuss exactly how they actually cut and the fact that specific restriction enzymes cut DNA at specific sequences in the DNA code. Here's a neat little illustration as to how a restriction enzyme works. Up here you see a sequence of DNA codes here, the G's, A's, C's, and T's. This is one strand up here, and here's another. A particular restriction enzyme will look for a certain sequence and cut that sequence along the strand at very specific sites. In this case, it finds the sequence G-A-A-T-T-C. The alternate code on the other strand is running in, running in reverse, G-A-A-T-T-C there. Now that restriction enzyme cuts the bonds of in the sugar phosphate backbone of one strand, and then along the hydrogen bonds in the middle of the strand, and again cuts the backbone of the opposite strand. Here's an illustration as to how it would work. If this were the host gene and this the bacterial plasmid, the same restriction enzyme, in this case ECO-R1, this enzyme is named for the bacterial type that it was found in, E. coli restriction enzyme number one. It's the first one ever ever discovered. 
cuts DNA at this sequence. Now the host DNA is opened up, and so is the plasmid. Because there are hydrogen bonds exposed here, we call these sticky ends because these nitrogen bases want to bond with their complementary pair. Well, if the plasmid was cut at the same places, the open sticky ends of that plasmid would fit the sticky end of the gene of interest. They do come together and bind, and now you have a recombined DNA or recombinant DNA. So restriction enzymes cut DNA at specific points in the DNA strand. This has allowed geneticists to cut out specific genes in a, in a chromosome. Bacteria have also become useful in recombinant DNA technology because bacteria also have a small circular piece of DNA that they use to transfer genetic information from one to, an, to the other. So this very small circular DNA loop is called a plasmid. It's small enough, indeed, to actually move through the cell membrane of the bacterium. So it can be transferred in and out of, this, of the bacterial cell. Let's look at how restriction enzymes and plasmids are used in recombinant DNA technology. Over here is a host cell. It happens to be a eukaryotic cell. For example, it could be uh, a human cell. Scientists can use restriction enzymes to isolate and cut out a specific gene. Let's say, for example, this is the human insulin gene, the gene that codes for the protein insulin. Over here is a bacteria that has a plasmid in it. The, the same restriction enzyme that was used to cut out the insulin gene is used to cut, a, cut out a section on the plasmid. When the gene of interest is isolated, and the plasmid is cut open. The gene can then be recombined with the plasmid. And with some simple techniques, that plasmid can be placed inside of a new bacterium. That bacterium will then reproduce, and as it reproduces, it will copy that plasmid gene over and over again. In a sense, this is a form of cloning genes. That is, as more and more bacteria are produced, they also start reading the gene. Transcription and translation take place, and then the, the protein of interest is made, in this case, insulin. Hundreds of needed proteins have been, have been made this way. In fact, bacterium were the first genetically modified organism in this way. To reiterate what goes on, a host cell gene is cut out using a specific restriction enzyme. That gene is sometimes called the gene of interest. A plasmid is cut using the same restriction enzyme. And then the host gene and the plasmid join, and the new plasmid is inserted into a bacterium. A protein synthesis is carried out, and that protein can be purified from the culture for use as, as treatments for diseases in humans or any other organism. I'm going to end the video there because I can't wait to get back to class so that we can do some of the activities that strengthen the concept of how recombinant DNA is accomplished using restriction enzymes and plasmid and how we've actually used this technology to do some other things like gel electrophoresis. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please bring them to class and we'll see you then. know what I'm talking about? Who's never left home? Who's never struck out? That's pretty neat!